Let's go to the Word this morning. I'm in a series on God's amazing grace. And I'm going to take you to the Old Testament in just a bit and uh, read a story some of you will be familiar with. Some of you have never heard it. And perhaps you never heard it the way we're going to tell it. But uh, when couples get married and they poll the couples and ask them, what is it that you love this person so much for? Oh, he's good looking. She's beautiful. The sex, excuse me. You know, there's just all kinds of answers. Oh, we got such a lovely home. Oh, you know, after 10 years of marriage, number one answer, not even close. There is no close second. Number one answer is this. I love them because they're kind. They're kind. She's kind to me. He's kind to me. There's a world that's out here. There's a reason that is the number one answer, because that's the answer the world wants. That's what they're looking for. There's whole websites, especially uh, young adults, groups of young people. There's websites on atheism. And one of the number one things they talk about is how unkind Christians are. And they will go with the data, they will tell you about stories, they will say, this person did this to me, and yet they were a so-called so believer in Christ. Guys, we're pathetic sometimes. Did you hear me or not say? Listen, we say at Fellowship, we love Jesus and we love people. We could say a bunch of stuff, okay? I've even been criticized for us saying that, as if I could give a rip. Are you hearing me or not say? This is who we are. We're called to love the Lord your God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. I think a lot of people don't love the Lord. They don't love their neighbor because they certainly don't love themselves. So something else we teach at Fellowship strongly is I matter, I have value. Say that with me. I matter, I have value. It's part of the whole picture. But the bottom line is this world is waiting and looking and longing, whether they know it or not, for somebody to be kind to them. Are y'all hearing me or not? Y'all ain't going to sleep on me, are you? You ain't mad at me because I'm talking to you about being kind, are you? Say. Now listen, that's our message today. We've been talking about God's amazing grace. What does being graceful look like? What does being a person of grace look like? Well, that's the call of God on my life. God has called me to be gracious to people. God has called me to be kind to people. Now, I'm a man. He didn't call me to be a woman. You hear me or not? Say. And women, he ain't called you to be a man. I get that. He ain't called you to have my personality. He ain't called me to have your personality. But he has called all of us to be kind. Y'all hear me or not? We're to be kind. Don't short sell kind. It's the number one thing people are looking for. And it's the number one thing so often the church is not giving out. We can give a track. We can sing a song. We can throw money in an offering plate. But you know what they're looking for? Kind. Graciousness. Amen. Say. I tell my young'uns that I'm raising. I've got older young'uns. You know them up on stage. But then I've got little ones. Two little girls. And I'm teaching them to say yes ma'am and no ma'am. Now maybe y'all didn't learn to say that. Well, don't blame that on me because I think it's the right thing to do. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I think it's the right thing to do. Thank you. How about this one? Please. I like these two words. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. This is called good manners. That's called being kind. But so, church, we need this message today. Y'all hear me or not? Now, I ain't jumping on you. I think we got the kindest church in Inglewood. So what? We can do better. Amen. We can reach further. And that's the call of God on my life. People think I'm a lunatic. I go to McDonald's every day. How many days a week? Hey, the guy, where are you at, David? You in the house? David. David asked me, how many days you go to McDonald's? What did I say? Every day. Why wouldn't I? It don't mean that's the only place I go to, but that's where I go for breakfast. Have a cup of coffee and a scrambled egg. I had it this morning. 
You might say, Clark, well, you're a lunatic. Why do you do that? You know the number one reason I do it? Well, I really love their coffee. But number two is the people. And you know McDonald's are always changing staff and stuff. That's life. It's a great, you know, beginning job. Unless you're a manager, it can be a great job. But the bottom line is I see so many people. And it's a great spot for me to sit and just be kind. You think I'm crazy or what? All right? So that's what I do. And that means no matter Walmart, wherever I go, out in the town, hardware store. Today I was on my way to church. And, uh, man, I was zipping down, come by the Catholic church early this morning. And there was a chair by the road. Man, I whipped that white truck around right in front of the Catholics, waved at him, turned on around, because I thought it was a boat seat. Wow. When you get older, you start to see things. It was a high chair. But sometimes I like picking up stuff. I meet people just doing that. You know what I mean? I've had such a, uh, there's a couple here in this morning in the first service, they said about 10 rows back, they saw me one day out in front of their house getting a door they were throwing away. <laughs> but because I was kind to them, they've been coming to church about a year now. That's just crazy, isn't it? You can be kind doing anything. And if I found something today that I thought I could give to somebody, I might would have grabbed that and give it to somebody. Now, that doesn't make me some great guy. Guys, you're going to hear how, what a hellraiser I was in just a bit. That's coming up. But the point is, is that kindness is huge. Are y'all ready to go now? Let's go to the message. Come on. God's amazing grace. Let's talk about it this morning. Roger will push me. Thank you, buddy. We'll go with it now. Graceful. What does it look like? What does being a gracious person look like? Well, it looks like Jesus. Looks like Jesus. So, here's Jesus. And I'm going to use some strong language today, guys. I'm sorry if you're a young person. It would be a couple of words, but it's just the truth. I'm going to say it, okay? Jesus, when he grew up, he grew up as the boy whose parents said he was born of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, see, we have the Bible now. We can look back and see, yes, he was. I get it. But can you imagine... They were in Bethlehem, and they come back home to Nazareth. And let, let me get this straight. The baby you done had ain't your husband's baby, but it's the God's baby. So Jesus grew up, in my strong opinion, being called a bastard child. You know you just, you knocked her up, Joseph. And now you're trying to pull this God mess. Did I lose you? Y'all okay? So this is the town Jesus grew up in. So if anybody had a right to not be kind, it would be Jesus. Y'all hear me or not? But you know what? He's in the synagogue. Jesus goes in the synagogue. He closes a book. He gives the book back to the priest or whatever in the synagogue. Jesus sits down, and all the eyes that were in that synagogue were fastened on Jesus. And Jesus began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now listen. What did they say about Jesus? Read that verse with me loud if you don't mind. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Don't forget this part. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? I tell you what, people can really be amazed when you're kind to them. Y'all listening? I mean, if you want to wow people, be kind to them. 
be gracious to them. I'm not talking about be a fake, a fraud, a phony. The world is so good at picking you out when you're that. But to live a life of kindness and graciousness. Even some boy who grew up to be a man that most likely they called all kinds of ugly names. When they finally heard him talk, they wondered, wow, what a kind, gracious man this is that read us those scriptures. Did y'all get it? But you know, I thought about today, well, I could say, let's be kind because Jesus was kind. And I thought, you know, yeah, but I'm not Jesus. That's what they're going to tell me. So I thought I'll just go with a regular human that was really kind. Okay, not the God man, Jesus. But greater is he that's in us and he is in this world. So we have his spirit and his strength, and so we can accomplish this through Jesus. But let's just talk about another guy. Pop it up, Raj. So Grace, what does it look like? Well, let's talk about David, King David, King David, King David. Now, David, he had some serious sin in his life, correct? Serious problems David had. Now, David was an awesome person. The Bible says David was a man after God's own what? Is, does God have the heart of love, yes or no? Maybe that's what that meant. Maybe David was a man after God's own heart because David was a kind man. David was not a perfect man, but David was a kind man. And let's look at the story now. And David said, now David's king now. And I can't teach the whole Bible this morning, but we're going to get some of it. And David said, he was King David now, is there yet not any left of the house of Saul? Saul was the king in David's life that hunted him down like a dog. King Saul wanted David killed. The odd thing is King Saul had a son who was David's friend. His name was what? Jonathan. Great. And they were good friends, but so what? Saul still tried to kill him. And so he was a wicked king. And I'm not going to talk all day about Saul. So, and then even after him, there was a king that reigned for a while. Just wicked. So the point is, now David's king, and here's what David's saying. Is there yet any that's left of the house of Saul? Say it with me. That I may show him what? There's our word. For whose sake? For Jonathan's sake. So here's the king. Now who was Jonathan? He was Saul's what? Son. Now here's what kings did back in the day. You might know this if you do, just bear with me. Kings killed everybody of the previous administration. You understand? Not like our government, which we don't have a king government. I'm a conservative, I think you know that about me. But our government... You can come into government power and be elected, and you still have all these other people in your government. You understand? And even though you're the president, you can still have all these other people that don't like you and that try to get you. And we see that now on TV. You hear me now? But here's the point. Here's the point. So here's how they did it in the old day. All you other people, we just kill you. Any questions? It seemed to be effective. So, John, so, so, that's normally what kings would do. So it was really weird. It was really weird. So, that David wants to show kindness. And there was of the house of Saul a servant. He was his chief servant, Ziba. And he was still serving and when they had called Ziba this joker to David the king said unto him are you Ziba he probably shaking his boots he said I'm Ziba and the king said is there not yet any of the house of Saul stop right there now under normal circumstances Ziba is thinking he is asking me if any of Saul's family at all, anywhere, is alive for one reason. 
so he can do what to them? Good, good. Yeah. So Zeba's probably, oh, God, yeah. But he continues, say it with me, that I may show the kindness of God unto him. What? You different. Did you know if we're kind to people in Inglewood, Venice, Northport, Port Charlotte, you know what they're going to say? Boy, you're different. Most people out here could give a rip about us. You mean by just me being kind? Absolutely. It's the number one thing people want. It's somebody to be kind to them. I believe we can do this. What do y'all think? Let's keep looking. And Ziba said unto the king, Well, Jonathan had yet a son, which was lame on his feet. I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but we'll pick it up here again in a minute. But basically, Saul was killed in battle. He was wounded, and he took his own life. King Saul committed suicide. But also in that very same battle, his son Jonathan was also killed. So now quite a bit of time had probably passed. You know, had another king, and now you got David. So... You know, so he's sort of like, he doesn't know. David doesn't know this stuff. So Ziba says, yeah, Jonathan had a kid, which is lame on his feet. What's that mean? And the king said unto him, well, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, behold, he's in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Lodabar is a lot like Rockingham. That's where I'm from, Rockingham. It's a place you don't go that much. Actually, it's a place out in the desert. It's a place where fugitives go. It's a place for the very poor, people that are on the run. You know, it's too far, so nobody will come get you if you're out yonder. So a safe place. Then King David sent, and I like the southern version here, and what? Fetched him. So King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, from where? Audubar. Now when Mephibosheth. Let's take another break real quick. How many had seen the movie Maleficent? How many saw Maleficent? Isn't that a good movie? I like Maleficent. I'm not saying believe it. I like that one. But I like the, the guy that does the voice. And her name was Maleficent. I love that. I love this guy. And as I'm studying this, I was going, and his name was Mephibosheth. And his name was Mephibosheth. So anyway, now you're going to remember that. How many hadn't seen Maleficent? Go get it. It's going to be good. You're going to enjoy it. Get some popcorn. Come on. Here we go. So now this fellow that was alive, he's older now. His name is what? Mephibosheth, right there. He was the son of Jonathan. He was the grandson of Saul. Hang in here. When he was come to David, so they fetch him. And now they bring Mephibosheth to David. And, and Mephibosheth does what? He falls on his what? Face. And he did what before the king? He reverenced the king. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold your servant. Wonder what Mephibosheth is thinking. He is going to be blank. He's going to be what? Absolutely. Wonder what the world thinks when they meet a Christian. Just think about it. I don't know. What do they think? Oh my God, here comes a Christian. I don't know what they think. That's why I just think you need to be you. How about if you just be you? How about that? I'm a Christian. It's weirdo. Weirdoville. I'm a Christian. The best I can be is when I'm Gary. Not full of crap. Excuse my language. My son told me last night, Dad, I really think you should change that word to garbage. You know you're getting old when your son starts raising you.
anyway. But wonder what people think when they see a Christian. Do they think they're going to get killed? I don't think they're going to think they're going to get killed, killed. Let me ask you this question. Do they think they're going to get judged? Which to some people kills their spirit. Do they think when they meet a Christian that they're going to meet a hypocrite? You think that would, you think that would be one of the top answers on Family Feud? <laughs> oh, yeah. So he thought he was going to get killed. So what does Mephibosheth's name mean? Let's just do a little studying real quick. It means man of shame. Say that three times with me. Don't mind. Mephibosheth means what? Man of shame. Man of shame. Man of shame. By the way, guys, that was my name and that was your name before you got saved. Before you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you were a man or woman, boy or girl of shame. Now, what do you mean, Clark? Well, the Bible says, a couple of scriptures, we've all sinned, okay? It's only by the grace of God that we've been saved. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. You are a shame, okay? God Almighty is holy, holy, holy. You and me ain't, ain't, ain't. And if you weren't holy, 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 you're a shame, shame, shame. Got it? See, that's what all our names mean. Man of shame. I was Gary Clark, 109 River Road. I learned to cuss God, GD, from my own mother. You hear me or not? And my brothers. And I was good at it. I was 109 River Road, Gary Clark. Man of shame, young man of shame. I never remember one time. Maybe it happened, I just don't know. If I was so full of the devil, I couldn't see straight. But I don't remember anyone being a Christian ever being kind to my family. I'm not saying they were unkind, but no one stands out. Oh, that guy was so kind! I don't remember it. Thank God for a man named Billy Graham who believed enough to get on TV that a drunk woman could be in her home and somehow the gospel could come through that TV and she saw something where she mattered and she had value and there was hope and she grabbed me that next one and said, we're going to church. Kindness matters, doesn't it, say? And you know what? We went to that church and I was so angry, so mad. I cussed my mother going up to church. What an idiot! This is how I'm going to church. How'd you come to that? I was so mad. Stupid. You're the stupidest person. This is how I'm talking to my own mother. This is horrible. Please don't talk to your mother like this. But uh, we got there. And here's how I say it. They were nice. They were nice. How many were like me your first time you went to church somewhere? You were sort of like me. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm an idiot. Is there anybody else other than me? I'm it! Okay. How many it was somebody nice? that helped either bring you to the Lord or lead you to the Lord or help you to the Lord. It was somebody nice. We tell them the truth, ain't we? Yeah. I know I'm back and forth, but I'm on this on purpose today. Just talking about this, but we're talking about this. So that's two things. So Mephibosheth, and his name was Mephibosheth, he deserved what? He deserved death. That was the way it was. You're in the former administration. You just ain't in the former administration. You the grandson. You a dead duck, fella. He was the grandson of King Saul, who had been the arch enemy of David. Just some stuff. God had rejected Saul and anointed David with his spirit. If you know your, some of the scriptures, an evil spirit had been tormenting Saul. Saul was wounded in battle against the Philistines, and Saul committed what? Suicide. He killed himself. Also in that battle... David's best friend, Jonathan, 
was also killed in that battle. Another one of Saul's sons continued to rule and was at war with David for a number of years. So this is a family that really deserved to be wiped off the planet if you went with the king deal. Okay? God's plan and anointing stood and eventually the king was killed and David became the king over all of Israel. And so now David's king. You're hearing the story today. We're catching you up. What kings normally did in those days, they would kill the descendants of the rival king. We've already talked about that. So Mephibosheth, the grandson of Saul, deserved to do what? That's that. All of us deserve to go to hell. Jesus didn't sin, I did. Yes or no? It's funny how we become Christians and somehow we, I know it's the devil and he's working on us, but we somehow think we better than these other people. That we were just like them, if not worse. We are crazy people. That's what this message is all about. How can you be kind, graceful? How can you show grace? Well, we've answered it. Be kind. Say that with me. One more time. One more time. To me, honestly, I used to knock on doors. Are y'all, you're awake still? I would go knock on doors. Knock, 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 knock. They'd answer the door. Hi, I'm Gary from another church. Not this church. When I was from another church. I would go, if you die today, do you know you'd go to heaven? What would you think? Big joker, come to your door. Knock, 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 knock. You open the door. Hi, I'm Gary Clark from, if you die today, do you know you go to heaven? What would you say? Charlie, what would you say? Yeah, you're crazy, go away! <laughs> That's why I picked on Charlie. I knew Charlie would say that. Guess what they think of it? We, I mean, but how about if I knocked on a door? It'd be a little bit weird even to knock on a door, wouldn't it? You'd be like, why are you in my yard? What you wanting to steal? Is that what you'd be thinking? That's right. You on drugs? You're trying to get my medicine cabinet, ain't you? Then why you got stuff, Charlie? You know, I'm just playing. But anyway, so the point is, but if I was kind, just a kind person, it'd probably go better, wouldn't it? But it'd probably go better, Charlie, if I was kind to you when I met you at school. Wouldn't it? It'd probably go better, Charlie, if when I see you on the ball field at practice, I'm kind to you. Yes or no? You see how this works or not? It'd probably be better if when I'm at the restaurant and the sweet lady, oh, here you are, who waited on me 20 years ago. Is that correct? It'd probably be better, instead of me coming to the house knocking on the door, if when you came to our table, we were kind. Is that right? Made a difference, didn't it? What's the point? Did we get the point? Are we learning? You think you had a seminar on how to win people to Jesus? That's what this is. Did y'all hear me or not? Most seminars are little quick fixes. This is where we live. This is our town. These are our neighbors. These are people that are serving us and working with us. The least we can do is be kind. Amen. Say, praise the Lord. Come on. Stepping out of my shoes. Man, yeah, I'm excited about this, but I'm about wore out. Y'all are so fortunate that I'm getting old. We'd be here all day. So let's finish the story. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son lame on his feet. Just a little detail. He was five years old when the tidings came that his granddaddy and his daddy had been killed. And the nurse of this young child took him up in her arms and fled. And somehow during this running, as she made haste to flee, he, she, fell. And because of that fall, whatever that means, he was left crippled. So he was a cripple, this boy, this man now, 
And the king said unto him, Where is he? Ziba said, Well, he's in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel. He's in Lodabar. So he was poor. Even though he'd been the grandson of the king, now he's on... He's out there in the country, way out in the desert area, living with somebody that's poor. You know you poor when you're living under somebody's roof that's poor. And it ain't in your roof. He was in a remote place called Lodabar. He was a fugitive. Why was he a fugitive? Take a wild guess. Because if anybody sees me, I'm going to be what? Yeah. He was forgotten. He was forgotten. Nobody even knew he was alive. Wonder how many people in Inglewood, Venice, Port Charlotte, they think nobody even knows I matter. They don't even know I exist. When I went and saw Mitch, Mitch was hurting bad. I told you the story not long ago. But the thing that stuck out, when I went and saw Mitch, and he was hurting, he was away from the Lord, I went and saw my own son down in Fort Myers, and he said this to me, nobody loves me here. Nobody really cares about me down here, Dad. I want to go back home. You know what I want Fellowship Church to be for people? Home. I had a lady. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. I had a lady this morning. You might be here right now. You hugged me. Could be the first right there. Yes, ma'am. You hugged me this morning. Can you just tell them what you said to me loud? This is the first hug I get all week. Can we say, can we just be honest real quick? Let's just be honest. I'm not saying it's the only hug, but when you come to fellowship, it's definitely one of the few, if not the only hug you get all week. Can I see some hands? I guess we matter to this town. How many hug somebody when they're away from this place? My hand's way up. Put my arm around somebody, shake their hand, pat them on the back. You hear me? We're about done with this message, but I think we've done, I think we got it, didn't we? I think we got it. I don't think there's any arguing here. Praise the Lord. I think we got it. I, I ain't done, so don't just keep clapping like I'm done. I don't respond to clapping. Some, some speakers, you'll clap and, and they'll run off the stage. I'm not him. Here we go. I go according to football schedule. Here we go. Come on, here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's finish the message. Not all of it, but you'll see. And David said, is there not yet any yet that I can show mercy to for Jonathan's sake? We're just talking. And yes, there was Mephibosheth, et cetera, et cetera. We're just reading it again. All right, now watch this verse. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and he did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he said, Behold your servant. Keep looking. And David said unto him, Say those two words with me. For I'll surely show you what? Kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I'll restore unto you all the land of your granddaddy, Saul. What? And you shall eat bread at my table, the king's table. How often? Every meal. Wow, is that ever some kindness? That's like overboard. I thought just being kind was I'm not going to kill him. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Is there any that I might show kindness to? And then these two words stuck out at me, fear not. I think the people in Inglewood, the people out in Venice and Northport and Port Charlotte, they some, I've, I've done it many times. They'll meet me because I'm a pastor. <laughs> And it's almost like they're scared of me. I think they should be scared of me because I'm half crazy. But, you know, it's just something. And here's the number one thing people say to me. You're different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, you know, that's a compliment. You're not, you don't seem like a pastor. Good! You know what I tell them? And I don't, you might not like me for this. I tell them I don't have many pastor friends. I would rather you be my friend. 
And to me, it just makes sense. If, you, if you're a car salesman, why do all your friends have to be car salesmen? If you work at the grocery store, all my friends are produce people. Why should preachers have preacher friends? I want my friends to be the friends of where I live. I want my friends to be Charlie. At the high school, I met him on the football field, didn't I? Charlie was going through some hurt in his life, but he was a little better than I was when I went through deep hurt. And he helped me by just talking and being a friend. You hear me? I could have gone to the pastors and got all the right answers. When I was going through my hurt, I got better help from friends. Not that they did, weren't good. I didn't need somebody to quote me scripture. I needed somebody to just be kind to me. Yes or no? And there's a lot of people in this world that are lost, that are still very smart people. And they can help you in your life. Open up to them. Did you hear me or not? Good message today. I'm just saying. Mephibosheth was the enemy of David. That's why he told him to fear not, guys. Look what, it was only natural for him to be afraid. Listen to Jesus, what he says to us. Read it out loud, please. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. That's pretty nice, isn't it? I don't know for a fact, but they say there's about 365 to 400 fear knots in the Bible. That's how much God wants you to know He loves you. You don't need to fear coming to Him. I know you're screwed up, God says. That's why I loved you and gave my son for you. You'll never measure up. But will you believe in me? Amen. That's what, that's what Christianity is. At one time, we were the enemies of God, just like Mephibosheth. And that's why he tells us not to what? Fear. So what does gracefulness look like? Look what Mephibosheth said. Mephibosheth bowed himself before King David, and he, and he said, What is your servant that you should look on such a dead dog like me? That's what so much of the world. I'm not saying everybody, a lot of them got great lives, okay? Things are good in their life. But there's a lot of hurting people that uh, they feel like they're a dead dog. Y'all hear me or not? How many in this room, ever in your life, you felt like a dead dog? Let me see some. I feel like a dead dog. Well, isn't that amazing? That was 75% of the crowd. I think we're hitting on all cylinders here today. I found out what graceful looks like. It was what those couples said about their spouse. <laughs> They're kind. That's what it means to be gracious to people. Y'all get it? I like this. Then the king called Ziba, the big servant joker. Saul's servant, former servant of Saul, and he said unto him, I have given unto your master's son all that pertain to Saul in his house. Thou therefore and your sons and your servants shall till the land for Mephibosheth. Got it? And you shall bring in the fruits that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Say my table. Now Ziba had how many sons? Fifteen sons and how many servants? Just in one fell swoop, that crippled joker went from thinking he's going to get a bullet in the head to eating at the king's table and getting all this guy's sons and children and servants. Boy, that's the grace of God, ain't it? Can you believe you put your faith in Jesus and all your sins will be gone? You mean I get me a new name written down in glory? Yeah. You mean God's preparing a place for me? Mm-hmm. You mean I'll never be alone ever again? Never. Because he said, I won't leave you alone. I'll send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to come and walk with you. Pretty good deal, isn't it? Eating at the Lord's table. Good stuff. Then said Zeba unto the king, according to all my Lord, the king has said to me, 
So shall thy servant do as from Mephibosheth, said the king. He shall eat at my table as one of the what? As one of the what? Isn't this like the, one of the best stories ever? And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants uh, unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat how often? Continually at the king's table. And he was what? Don't forget, he was what? Now let's close with some quick points, Raj. Some fast, fast points. Is there any left that I might show the kindness of God to? What's the answer to that question? Good. Let's, let's ask some more questions or say some things. The people in Inglewood, Venice, Northport, Port Charlotte, they are not your enemies. They are not your enemies. Say that with me. They are not my enemies. My neighbor is not my enemy. The condo association, I know it's hard, but they are not my enemy. Okay? They don't know how to walk with God. Our world doesn't know how to walk with God. I knew how to curse God's name. I knew how to steal. I knew how to beat your tail. But I did not know how to walk with God. It took kind people. I told the earlier service, my pastor was so kind to me. When while he's being kind to me, I'm trying to make out with his daughter. Oh, I'm the only one, I know. But I'm just saying, kindness is risky. But my pastor loved me enough, and he got on to me, obviously. But see, Gary didn't know how to walk. See, I thought that's what girls were for, to screw around with. But he was kind to me, showed me God's word. These are my daughters, Gary. This is what God says about how to treat a woman, Gary. And through his kindness, I learned how to love. Y'all hear me or not? I learned how to be a good daddy. But these people don't sometimes know how to walk. You hear me? They haven't experienced the riches of God's grace. They're on the run. They're on the run out there. They need us. Say that. They need who? Us. They need to know they're not what? I was at Bob Evans the other day in Venice. And the lady, I was real nice to her. She'd had a bad day. I didn't know. I'm just being nice, kind. She's feed me. Of course I'm going to be kind. I come in three days later. Another lady waits on me. And she says, uh, you, were you in here about three days ago? I said, yes, ma'am. It's a different shift. She said, I thought it was you. She said, a girl was having a really bad day, and she said, this man came in. I think he was a preacher. And he was so nice and so kind. And the waitress three days later said, I thought it was you. Don't put me up. I'm not doing it for that reason. But do people, when they hear of a kind deed, do they think it was you? It's convicting, isn't it? How y'all doing from the hills of Carolina? We're done. Is there any left that I might show the kindness of God? Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Boom! Amen. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. 
For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.